Good morning, church, and welcome to this service of worship for healing and ministry transition. For those who are joining the service online, if you could please just gather everyone, huddle together as a family, and if you have a candle, have it ready. There is a point in the service where we will be lighting a candle. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus still calls the heavy-hearted and offers them comfort. We gather in response to his invitation. We seek to find comfort um, in him and with each other. May we all stand as we worship God together in song. Give it up. 
Amen. Won't you please be seated? This morning as we gather together, we listened carefully as a congregation and as we met together last week, there was a call that we gather together for healing. And so it is to, to God that we come and to one another that we minister the presence of Christ's healing. And so let us continue as we pray together. In the beginning, before time, before people, before the world began, together we say, God was. Here and now among us, besides us, enlisting the people of earth for the purposes of heaven, together we say, God is. In the future, when we have turned to dust and all we know has found its fulfillment, together we say, God will be. Not denying the world, but delighting in it. Not condemning the world, but redeeming it through Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God was God is, and God will be. Amen. Let us stand together as we continue in our worship together. O oh, gracious God, we thank you, Lord, that we can continue in worship. We know, Lord God, if some of us have need today, all we have to say is help me. Some of us need to say today, save me. Some of us need to say today, hold me. Some of us need to say, forgive me. You call us. And so we speak to you in our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
nothing is impossible for you Cause you hold my world in your hands Sing nothing is impossible for you Nothing is impossible Nothing is impossible for you yeah. You hold my world in your hands
as we present ourselves and bring our offerings to you of time, talent, and treasures today and through the week, we lift our hearts to God in prayer. Ever-present God, be with us in our isolation. Be close to us in our distancing. Be healing in our sickness. Be joy in our sadness. Be light in our darkness. Be wisdom in our confusion. Be all that is familiar when all is unfamiliar. That when the doors reopen, we may with the zeal of Pentecost inhabit our communities and speak of your goodness in an emerging world. For Jesus' sake, amen. Please, can you be seated for the offering? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to GPTV. Let's go over to the Gen Now team and find out what's happening this Sunday. Hey, Grace Boyne. Let's have a look at what's happening in our Gen Now ministry this week. For our kids' church, we have our Doodle Studio, our exciting lesson, as well as our on-campus worship that you'll be able to join. That is Grace Boyne Online and Kids' Church Online, as well as Kids' Church on Campus. More details for this on the screen. Then for our GAP ministry, which is our grade 4 to 6 ministry, we have a bunch of cool resources and connect sessions that you'll be able to join during the week. Whether you would like to join us for online or on campus, there is a touch point for everyone. So please do have a look for some of the details on the screen. Lastly, for our EDGE youth ministry, which is 13 years to 18 years, you'll be able to access your weekly teaching on Instagram and Facebook, as well as YouTube, as well as join us for on-campus worship during the week. Please look out for links that will be sent out across all these ministry platforms as we join together again for online worship, as well as for on-campus worship. Thank you for joining me for Jen Now for this week. So if you haven't signed up for WhatsApp, send us a hello to the number on the screen and we'll put you on the group. Remember, it's a broadcast only group, so you won't be communicating with other people. You'll only get the communication from Grace Point. Well, that's all from us at GPTV. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service and enjoy your Sunday. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to read a fairly lengthy passage to you, and I'm going to read it as I want to encourage you to read the Bible, which is to try and forget about the verse numbers and the chapter numbers, so I'm going to take you from the end of chapter 4 right through to the end of chapter 5. And can I just give you a little bit of background before I start reading? Jesus introduces this particular length of passage, at least Mark introduces it, 
with the parable of the mustard seed, tiny mustard seed, and how it grows into this huge, huge plant. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet! Be still! Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerizines. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of God, the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us amongst the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission. And the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd about... 2,000 in number rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there, seeing Jesus he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter's dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She'd suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she, drew, she grew worse. 
When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter's dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talita kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, I don't often have a text that I give a congregation so that they can go away and especially those who have attention deficit may remember what I said. But here's the text for today. Jesus said to him, this is to the demoniac man. Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done to you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Now, as I said to the, the eight o'clock congregation, we are going to be speaking about healing today because healing is really our mandate as the people of God, believe it or not. We're not an audience here today. We're actually a collective of people that have come to sharpen our intention and our faith, and our action. So, I must be completely honest with you, just so that you understand what my expectation is of the congregation today, that next week when you come back, you will come into this place and tell people about the people you have healed. 
Okay. Be careful. Okay. Because you, you do understand that these Gospels are written so that you can understand quite intimately who you are because you are the body of Christ. You are God's hands. You are God's being in the world today. And so I've read you this passage uh, very specifically so that part of the work that we do here today motivates, mandates us to go into the world and to do this work. And as you recognize, Mark chapter 5 has got three very unique healings. There's the healing of the demon-possessed man. I don't think it, that it is told in any of the Gospels as dramatically as it is in Mark. And then the story of the woman who touched the edge of Jesus' garment so that she could be healed of some, looks like, gynecological problem. And then the raising of this daughter of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Now there are all sorts of nuances in this passage. And please remember what I said to you at the beginning of the passage. If you've got faith like a mustard seed, in other words, a minuscule amount of faith, you can move mountains. So if, if when I said to you, please go from this place and bring healing, you just had a funny feeling in your body that maybe... I can do something about something somewhere. Then you're a candidate. Now I find this passage profoundly moving. So Jesus gets into a boat, takes a journey into demon-possessed land. They nearly lose their lives. Let's be frank about that. Let's be absolutely frank about that. These fishermen knew the lake, and they knew how dangerous these storms could be. It wasn't just a little mamby-pamby kind of storm. And Jesus is asleep in the stern, which I happen to think is sometimes what we feel when we're in trouble or when we're in pain, we sometimes feel that the notice is up, gone for lunch. Don't you, don't you sometimes feel that about God? But God, can't, can't you hear me? You read it again and again in the Psalms. When I'm in trouble, nothing. Here he is asleep in the stern. And the disciples go up to him and basically say to him, Darling, we're about to die. Couldn't you care? And having just spoken about faith, like a mustard seed, he says to them, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And then he comes into this situation. Into a most desperate, broken human being. I mean, can you imagine this? Just listen to this. Just listen to this. He lived in the tombs, basically in a graveyard. No one could buy, bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart, broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Just for a moment, come into that place 
of alienation from society, from himself, a place of complete rejection and the, the loneliness that is here is almost indescribable. Almost indescribable. Sometimes some of us go through pain or we have experienced pain that is so excruciating that it alienates us from everything. I had an opportunity a couple of years ago to spend time with the Somali community. I, I actually was doing a debriefing. And a woman came and spoke about what had happened to her. Um, these men came into her home, her husband and her home, and forced her husband to sit and watch as seven of them raped her. And as she spoke, this story came to my mind. Because the, the severing of her sanity was understandable. And her husband's absolute inability to do anything because if he moved they had guns at his head and Jesus comes into that place which quite clearly even the writer understands as so desperately frightening talk about the dark night of the soul and comes to this man who doesn't have identity anymore. He's a thing. And it seems, people, as if this is the only reason Jesus crossed the lake. There's nothing more he does there. And he says to him, what is your name? What is your name? In other words, who are you? And restores his sanity as the demons run into the pigs. I wonder exactly where the moment of healing is. I want to suggest that it was as Jesus saw him. As only Jesus could. And he felt in that question the enabling of his own dignity again that he was healed we had a terrible tragedy that happened about three weeks ago at our center, one of our young men was addicted to crystal meth. And he came back in the middle of the night and he threatened to kill people and he threatened to burn the center and they eventually murdered him. And as he was dying, he cried out for forgiveness. So this is not a 2,000 old story, let me tell you. But what I want to say to you is that quite clearly 
Jesus, one of the things that Jesus does is he, he recreates what has been decimated in whatever way. And gives back, basically gives back life to this rejected, despised, despicable human being. So as we come to this place, perhaps our conditions are not, I'm not saying that you're demon possessed and all over the place, but maybe you know people. Or maybe you know you can identify with some of this alienation because of the pain that you might have gone through. But allow the Christ to enter into that space and ask of you again your name, which goes right back to the beginning of your creation. The next story is not unlike that. The next story is not unlike that. The next story is about this woman who has been, I think, quite profoundly humiliated by going to doctors, spending her money, having nothing left, still bleeding. And here comes the mustard seed, and she touches him. And he won't let her get away with it. Why did he have to stop her? And so I sometimes think that our experience of Christ brings us into the reality of our truth, which can sometimes be profoundly disruptive and disturbing. Sometimes we need to recognize that Jesus is not just going to let us get away with a quick pass. He's not just going to let us sneak a relationship with him that doesn't have depth. So I want to take you back into the passage, and I want to do it in another way. Okay? So she comes up and she's touching her. Just touch his clothes and I'll be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped. She felt her body that she was freed from suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around and said, now listen to this, rather, who touched my clothes? And so I want to say that sometimes our encounter of God healing us is not that comfortable. Sometimes God does get angry with us because we hide and we make excuses and we do this and we do that to try and ameliorate our own judgment of ourselves. And so we need to be confronted about the stuff that's not completely right. And I'm not going to let you get away with this now. How about that interpretation of this passage? And as she ultimately comes into the light, he enables her to understand exactly how profound his love for her is that will not let her go. And so I want to confront you today and say, you can sneak and slide around. We can sneak and slide. Let me say we can sneak and slide around about our responsibilities to Christ. But let me warn you, he will not let you go. He will come for you and he will seek whether you want it or not. He will seek your healing. And so at the beginning, I might have said a little frivolously, you know, come next week and speak about the healings that you've done, because that is a very serious challenge. Because we are often full of excuses, 
and lazy. And someone else can do the work. The ministers can do the work. The ministers must run the church. The ministers don't, the church will die. Rubbish. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Take very seriously the little seed of faith that you have within you so that God can nurture and affect South Africa. And then, of course, the synagogue ruler. Now, one would imagine that a synagogue ruler, when you get to the position of ruling a synagogue, you must really know everything that there is to know about God. And here, the synagogue ruler, who's probably a very good organizer, has got everything in order, and his little girl, he can see his little girl of 12 years old, is dying. And he breaks through all the suspicion that there is, because by this time, some people have wanted to kill Jesus. And he risks coming up. And pleading for mercy. And so the last thing I want to suggest to you is that Jesus can go to the place of death. And as impossible and as laughable as it might seem to everybody else, there he can say, he can say, Talita kum, get up, little girl, get up. This church has been through a huge transition. Gary has left, and for many of you that feels like a death. Gary and Jackie have divorced. And with respect, I think that divorce has echoed into many lives. also a death. And we're going to come to a place in the service where we bring that pain and other pain into this place. Some of you have profoundly personal hurt that has never, ever quietened the noise, the, it's, never, it's voice has never been able to be silenced with all sorts of things. You will come here. There are many of you who are connected to people who in this last year and a half have passed away from COVID. Shockingly, a friend of our worship group, whom we will remember, dropped dead this week. Two days of COVID. We're in a deluge of suffering in this country for all sorts of reasons. And on Wednesday, there's a meeting in Dipkloof to start preparing, chasing all foreign nationals out of this country so that we can rid ourselves of the scourge of Maquere Queres. Do we have no idea of the pain that many of them are in from where they have come? How dare we be silent as Christ's people? How dare we? And so we will come and we will find a, a, a God of passionate compassion journeying again to us across the waters. We will find the Christ who feels so sensitively that he heals a broken woman.
and raises a dead child. Amen. We now come to our time of healing and our time of transition. And we give thanks for the ministry of Similo and Jackie and Gary. Recognizing that in this time we allow Christ to heal us of our pain, but also take very seriously that we must go back to our families and our connections and tell them what Christ has done for us so that Christ can do it for them. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to seek and a time to loose. Today, therefore, it is a time to mark the transition of Jackie and Gary's ministry. Time to look back and a time to look forward. A time for joy and a time for sadness. It's a time to give thanks and praise to Almighty God for what that name has given us in our lives together. It is also a time for us to heal, mourn, grieve, and imagine a new way. Blessed be God. Please say with me, and blessed be his holy name. The Lord makes everything beautiful in its time. Together, whatever God does, endures forever. For every season, for everything there is a season, a time to go and a time to come. Yet the Spirit blows where it will, and for those who are led by the Spirit, they must follow. We say thank you to God for Gary's ministry. He has touched many of your lives in a unique way. He has inspired your imagination. I've watched him often in the foyer here reach out and greet and make you know that this is your home. And we thank you for what God has done through the ministry of Gary and Jackie and Similo in building and in creating and in imagining new ways of experiencing and discovering Christ our Savior. They have been your pastors to proclaim God's word some of you have been baptized by them. You've received the sacraments from them. They have given to you of their wisdom and their counsel. For many of you, they have journeyed in the places of grief and loss. And we give thanks to God for them. Let us pray.
We thank you for our life together in this congregation and community. You have led us by the Holy Spirit to serve one another in this place, to build up your church, to glorify your name. We have worked for the sake of your gospel. And so we thank you, Lord, for the gifts in Gary and Jackie and Similo. And we pray that as, ja as Gary begins his new ministry in the South Carolina conference in the United Methodist Church, that yet there your spirit will be upon him, your anointing will bless him. And we pray that you will continue to inspire and heal and guide Jackie and Similo in the work that they have to imagine in this place, in the mission which opens up for each and every one of us. May they be given the gift of bringing into this place those who will realize your vision for your people here. We thank you for the staff and everyone who contributes in this place in some way with their care and with their ministry. Affirm them and enable them to know that not a single hair falls from their head without you knowing. Yes, Lord, may they sense you going ahead, beside, above, beneath, behind them, around them, in love. In the name of Jesus, amen. And so we come together as we prepare ourselves for that moment of healing. Let us pray. For God, we thank you for our ministry together in this place. I pray for Gary, God, that as he continues to minister your word and deed, that you would be with him. Lord God, we remember today that you are the light. And you are the love that creates the world. And that you are the light that shines in the darkness. And we are silent, God. We realize, Lord, that there are times when we, can, are, when we cannot feel your love. There are times where we struggle to see your light. And there are times there... You seem absent and we feel empty. And yet we know that even when pain is raw, you send relief. When fear paralyzes, you pour out peace. And when anger festers, you have mercy. When doubt overwhelms, you hold us fast. And so we thank you, God, that today you call us to healing. In Jesus' name, amen. People, we're now going to invite you to come forward. We do have earbuds there, or whatever you use those things for, and we will anoint you with oil because of COVID at the moment. We're not allowed to touch one another. And... Um, and then if you would go across there, you will be given a candle to light to show, first of all, symbolically, that you are the light of Christ in the world. And secondly, the candle will symbolize your commitment to taking healing into the world. <clears throat> Thank you. 
name of Christ, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be healed. Spirit be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. <coughs> Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, sorry, and of the Son. Son and of the Holy Spirit be 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, We have encountered the passionate
compassion of the Lord. And now we let go of all our pain and our hurt. I let go window and door, house and home, memory and fear. I let go the hurt of the past and look to the hope of the future. I let go knowing that I will always carry part of my past, part of you with me, woven into the story of my life. Help us, Christ our friend, softly to fold inside the grief and the sadness, to pack away the pain and to move on, taking each day in your company, traveling each step in your love. This we pray in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Neither life nor death can separate those who trust in you. Unite us to yourself, together with our sisters and brothers, that in one fellowship with you, we may be one with those we love. Give us courage, constancy, and hope through Jesus Christ, who died and rose again. Amen. May I ask that we all stand as we receive the final blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, who is the earth maker, pain bearer, and life giver, remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace. Have a wonderful week. Tea and coffee will be served in the foyer. See you next week.